The last few shows we've been talking about soil sampling and some of the things to look for when you're considering nutrients for next year's crop. And one of the real big ones is phosphorus. Now when you talk about the primary nutrients, we have nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. They're the ones that your plants need the most pounds of in order to produce yield. And phosphorus sometimes gets left out of the equation. Everybody gets excited talking about nitrogen, yep. but we forget how important phosphorus is. Yeah, on a soil test, there are three different things, three different tests that you can get to tell you how much phosphorus you really have out there. In low pH soils, we believe the Bray tests are a little more accurate measure. There is a weak Bray test and a strong Bray test. The weak Bray is also called the P1, and that tells you available phosphorus. And like we say, it's a little bit more accurate, we believe, in lower pH soils. The P2, or strong Bray test, tells you total phosphorus in the soil. So it tells you what's available plus what's unavailable in your soil, and that's kind of nice to know what your total soil phosphorus is. The other test you may use for phosphorus is the Olson test. Now for us on our farm, we consider the Olson test a more accurate measure of phosphorus that's going to be available for you if your soil pH is above 7. So when we're doing soil testing, if our pH is above 7, we like to look at that Olson test to give us an idea of how much phosphorus is available. If our pH was below 7, we'd use that weak break test. All right, so let's talk about what these tests really mean. The available test, the, both the P1 and the Olson test, if we've got, let's say, 10 parts per million out there, how do we know how to fertilize? What do we do? The way we figure it, typical soil tests are done at a six inch depth. And in every three inches of soil across one acre, we have roughly a million pounds. So in a six inch sample, we have roughly two million pounds represented by that sample. So if you have 10 parts per million, you just take that times two, since you have two million pounds of soil, and that gives us 20 pounds per acre of phosphorus. All right, so when you look at a corn crop, a 200 bushel corn crop, the grain only is gonna remove about 76 pounds of actual phosphorus from the soil, just the grain only. And then the stover, what it takes to produce all that, by the time you add the stover and the grain together, you're looking at somewhere around 120 pounds of phosphorus. If we've got 20 out there in the soil, now granted, our roots hopefully are gonna go more than six inches deep, but still, it's going to be an issue. Well, if we need 120 pounds of phosphorus and we've got roughly 20 pounds that's available in the soils, the difference there is about 100 pounds. Now you can apply 100 pounds and that's probably okay too, but we know we're gonna get some mineralization and breakdown of the organic matter out in that soil. So there is gonna be some phosphorus that frees up. But you may not gets, need the whole 100 that's, pounds. That's what gets tricky is we don't know exactly what we're gonna get from mineralization of the soil. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can find out if your crop is running short. Like right now, you could go out in many cases and if you still got green plant tissue and that crop is still growing, you could do some tests. We'd really like to see some plant tissue tests in the earlier part of the growing season to see how that plant is doing when it really matters, when it's really starting to grow vegetatively or it's right in the heart of reproductive stages, those kind of things. We like to do some tissue analysis and see where our phosphorus is. The other thing you can do is look for some signs on your plants that you may be a little bit short on phosphorus. Typically, we'll see some purpling earlier in the season. When we've got that purpling going on, a lot of times that ends up being a phosphorus problem. The other big issue we have with phosphorus is a lot of phosphorus gets tied up in the soil. So that's why typically that P2 is way higher than the P1. In other words, we have lots more phosphorus in the soil than what's really available to plants. So what a lot of people do to make their phosphorus more available, or at least what they put out there, is they'll band that phosphorus. A lot of studies have shown you can cut your phosphorus rates dramatically when you band it. And the other thing you can do is use very available starter fertilizers. But again, you wanna band that phosphorus for the very best uptake. I thought you were gonna say Avail there too, Brian, because that's another thing. Yep. There are some products now on the market, like Avail would be one that we're using on our farm, that help keep that phosphorus from being tied up. Yeah, phosphorus is probably one of the trickiest nutrients we have to deal with, but again, you've gotta know how to read it on the soil test, you've gotta understand how to convert it from parts per million to pounds per acre, then look at what your crop truly needs, subtract the difference, and at a minimum, you know you're gonna to have to do something with phosphorus in most cases, you certainly do have the breakdown of organic matter in soil, so some phosphorus will come available during the season. We just don't know how much that is all the time. So it is important to make sure you're getting some phosphorus out there every year, make sure it's available to your plant, because if you don't have good phosphorus levels, you know you will not reach your maximum yield potential. Nutrients are very important to your success growing crops, but so is weed control, especially with tough ones like our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to control this weed later in the show.